Hey, it's Jim Walnitsky with On One. Today we're going back to Scotland. I promised I was going to share some more of these photographs with you, and here's the second one. So this actually was a drive-by shoot, believe it or not. This is right by the side of the road. That's what the highlands are like. They're fantastic. So I love this guy in this photo. I love the landscape. But I'm going to reimagine this a little bit so that it matches the experience that I had when I shot it. So what we're going to do is we're going to dodge and burn this photo using blend modes. We're going to work almost exclusively in layers for this. First thing I'm going to do is make a copy of this layer. And then I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. Now multiply is a darkening blend mode, which can give you saturated colors and lots of drama. And I like what this is doing to the sky. And I'm going to want to poke some holes in this mask to bring back light in certain areas. So I'm going to invert the mask and then invert it again so that I can actually see the white mask. And I'll grab my brush tool, make sure that my perfect brush is off. And I'm going to make sure that my feather is at 100%. And my opacity is down somewhere 018 or so. And I'm going to make sure that I'm painting out, which is what I want to do. And I'm going to start to paint some light. And I think I'll increase the opacity of my brush just a little more. Somewhere around there. And I'm just going to start to paint some light back into this. So what I'm going to do is, you know, work on these areas here and here. And if you watch my mask over here, you can see that I'm starting to get some light in these areas. Let's work up in here and along this way. And I'm going to make my brush a little smaller and just start to follow the contours of the landscape a little bit and just bring some light back into these areas where I think it should be. So this is just really a matter of interpretation. But that's the fun part about this is you get to decide. You're not letting the software decide for you. You get to decide what your photo looks like. So I'm going to work up along the edges of these trees. And in here, let's zoom in a little bit into this area so we can see what we're doing and get a little more precision. And I'm just going to work the edges of this stuff and bring some of this back. And so when I'm doing this, I'm also adding texture, right, and shape, which is something that is always good. Texture and shape in a photograph makes it seem three-dimensional. And, uh, you know, that's what we want, right? So just work in here a little bit. I'm going to work up on the edges of these trees a little bit. And up in here. Just lighten this stuff up in here. And you can see this is subtle, but as I get up into the mountain, you're going to be able to see this more. So let's work up on the side of the mountain here. Let's increase the size of my brush a little bit and just work in here to open this up. And what I'm trying to do is mimic the way the light was falling because it was in and out of the clouds that day. And I happened to catch this at a moment when there was no sunlight on the side of this mountain. But when it was there, it was spectacular. So because my brush opacity is low, this buildup is slow, and I like working that way because I think when I work that way, it looks more natural. It doesn't look like I took a big brush at 100% and just said, let there be light. So here we go. And I might want to bring a little bit more in here. And I definitely want some more on the sides of these trees. And a little bit up in here. Up along this little curve here. And up along the top of the mountain. 
And I think I'm, what I've got is starting to look pretty good. So let's zoom out. I like that. So that's my before and that's my after. So now I'm going to ask for a stamped layer. I'm going to control click on the layer right here and just ask for a new stamped layer. And it's going to make one for me. I'm going to change my blend mode to screen. Now screen is a lightning blend mode. And I think I'm going to leave this at 100% and just invert this layer. And now I'm going to paint in. I'm going to increase the size of my brush. And I may have to bring my opacity down a little bit. And I do. It's a little too much. So let's go down to about 20. And you know what? Let's start up at the top of the mountain here. So I'm just going to bring that into the view on my screen to make my brush a little smaller. And just paint some light up in here. Now you got to be careful with these brush strokes that you that you blend them. So I'm using a pressure sensitive pen here. So I'm pressing less at the beginning and at the end of my brush stroke than I am in the middle. Just to blend those areas, those brush strokes in with the areas around them. And you can see how I'm starting to add now shape to my tree lines. And I'm not being real exact. It's an organic looking brush stroke. So let's make this a little smaller and just kind of go in here along the tops of these trees and in here. That's looking really nice along the sides of this tree and this guy here. And I'm going to go up in here a little bit. And I'm just working with what the photograph is giving me in terms of shape and light. And I'm just kind of really accentuating what's already there. But again, the nice thing about this process is I get to decide what's bright, what's dark. And I'm not letting the software do it for me. And this is how your work really becomes your own. If I work this photograph again, and I've already worked it a couple of times, just in preparation for this video, it's going to look different because I might be feeling different at that moment, I might see different things, and uh, that's the beauty of art. It's, it's a spontaneous thing. So let's zoom out and see what we've done. Right, so that looks pretty nice. So I'm going to actually go up back to my darken layer and let's call this darken and let's call the other one lighten. We could call it dodge and burn too. You can call them whatever you want. I'm going to go back to my darken and I need to be painting out now, right? Because I want to work up in my sky just a little bit with a really light brush and I just want to paint back some of the bright spots in these clouds and just kind of even these out. I don't want my sky that dark. So that's starting to look pretty good. I think I want to bring some of this back too. Look at a little halo -y back there. And even though it's not like that, I don't like the way it looks. So I'm just going to bring that back, that part of the sky. You can see the big black spot on my mask, and that's what that is. All right. So now let's go back up to the top of our layer stack and ask for another stamped layer. And I'm going to make this one a smart layer because we're going over into effects. And the first thing I want is a tone enhancer. And what I'm after in the tone enhancer, if you watch my other stuff, you know that I love the curve. I'm going to bring this up and just brighten this up a little bit, just like that. doesn't really need a lot, just a little bit. And let's add a glow to this. So I think I'm going to go for the deep forest glow. Now that's way too much. So I'm going to back this off quite a bit. And you'll notice that it gets darker. But I get that nice kind of magical glow. And I, I just really like this effect. This is probably my favorite glow. This one in the angel glow. I really like those. So let's... um start thinking about the bottom of this photo. I think it needs to be a little darker. 
So let's add a tone enhancer again and just pull the curve down just a little bit and grab my masking bug and just shut down the bottom part of this photo just a little bit. So let's see the before and after. Yeah, that's all I'm looking for. And then I think I want to do one more thing here. And um, I kind of want to brighten the side of the mountain. So let's grab another tone enhancer and go back down to the curve and just pull it up a little bit. I don't need a lot. That's enough. And I'm going to make a mask out of this one. So let's invert the mask and just paint this in. So I'm going to make sure that my perfect brush is selected. And I got a feather of 66. My opacity is 100. I'm going to make this a little bigger and just paint this. Whoops, I got to make sure that I'm painting in. I always forget to do that. And just paint this mountainside in. Just so it's a little brighter. Right? Just like that. So here's my before and my after. Now I need to maintain my contrast. It's starting to look a little washed out. So I'm going to pull my bottom tones, my dark tones and my curve down a little bit just to maintain that contrast. Then I can brighten that up a little more if I want. And I think I like that. That looks nice. And uh, I think the last thing we'll do is just add one more filter here and let's just add a vignette and go for the big softy that's way too much so that looks pretty good just want it nice and subtle I don't want it overwhelming just a little bit and we'll say we're done so this is gonna kick me back out into layers now and we're going to repurpose one of the masks that we made to splash some color on the side of the mountain and in the grass. So I'll ask for a new color solid layer, color fill layer. And my blend mode set to overlay, which is what I want. And I'm going to click OK. And I'm just going to take this lighten mask and I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to need to invert the mask on the color fill layer and then just right click and press paste mask and now I've pasted some nice orange light onto my mountain and that looks pretty good I think I might go back to my effects layer I've got the wrong layer selected so I have to just hit done again what I really wanted selected was the layer before that, which is the Lighten 1 layer, which has got my effects on it. So we're going to go back to the effects layer. And I think I might just brighten this a little more. So I'm just going to ask for a tone enhancer and maybe just goose the exposure a little bit, just like that. And say done. And it'll kick us back out into layers. And we'll see if that does it. Yeah, that looks really nice. So the basic idea that I want you to get here is that you can dodge and burn using the multiply and the screen blend mode because those are darkening and lightening blend modes. So here's where we started. And that's where we ended up. I'm thinking that the light here is a little harsh. So let's pull that back just a hair. And you can interpret this, a photo like this, however you want. So I hope you had fun watching this. This is Jim Walninski. Until next time.